In the realm of cultivation, where the strong reign supreme, a few chosen ones have ascended beyond mere mortals. They have mastered the arts of immortality, harnessing cosmic energies to crush all who stand in their way. Prepare to witness the ultimate display of power as we unveil the mightiest cultivators in the world of Manhua. At number 10, we have Spirit Sword Sovereign. Chu Xing Yun went from a pathetic weakling to an insanely powerful martial artist until his enemies killed him. But then he gets isekai back to when he was a punk, and you know he ain't letting that second chance slip. This time, Chu's holding it tight for his crew, murking anybody trying him with that spirit sword. No more games, he's smashing any fool who looks at him sideways on his grind back to the top. Ain't nobody outgrinding or outdripping the Chu clan lord. He's embracing that anti-hero energy. Bow down or catch the spiritual fade. Chu's on that Sigma grind set, letting his sword do the talking while he levels up to be the baddest dude in the realm. It's built differently or gets smoked. Simple as that. For number 9, we've got God of Martial Arts. This world is crazy. Your martial arts skills literally decide if you're eating good or catching fade. The young master of the Lin fam, dude was straight trash at cultivating and got bullied and beat down by his own cousin. Then, this regular dude Lin Feng dies in a car accident, but gets isekai into the body of that weak young master. Talk about a crazy power-up. But in this dog-eat-dog -dog world, being weak means you're just getting shat on constantly. Can the new Lin Feng go from being a useless punching bag to an unstoppable martial god? Or is he just trading one life of taking L's for another? Dude's gonna have to hit the celestial hyperbolic time chamber and level up insanely fast if he wants a chance. Coming in at 8, we have Grandmaster of Demonic Cultivation. This one's built differently. Wei Wuxian was an absolute savage back in the day, the most OP cultivator who didn't give a f He started his own demonic sect and was out there wildin', killing whoever crossed him. Dude made mad enemies with his unapologetic demon grind set and eventually got betrayed by his own martial bro when he was weak. After getting ganged up on by every major sect, Wuxian died. But then this random weakling summons Wuxian's soul to get revenge on his clan. Next thing you know, the most demonic cultivator of all time reincarnates into the body of some useless kid, who gets taken in by Wuxian's archenemy, Lan Wangji. The chaos potential is through the roof. At number 7, we've got Private Devil Puppy with a spicy reincarnation romance drama. So the Demon King and the God of Spring used to be hot and heavy lovers until they both tragically died. But since the Demon King was an ancient OP fiend, he gets revived. After uniting the Demon Realm, 200 years later, his old flame, the God of Spring, reincarnates but as a mere mortal sword master who lost all his past life memories. Now this guy is dead set on exterminating demons to protect humans. But in a wild twist of fate, his old demonic boo is low-key simping over him like a loyal puppy. The all-powerful Demon King catching fields while his old lover has zero recollection and just wants him dead? You need to read this if you want some enemies to lovers reincarnation romance. Coming in at 6, we have the Grand Mudang Saga. This dude was the ultimate dark arts overlord, so OP that all the cultivators branded him evil and kicked off a massive war over it. His biggest beef? The baddest Mudang clan. He went on a straight-up murking spree, taking out their disciples and masters left and right. Years later, he's on his deathbed with even his own people wanting him gone. Except his loyal student, Chun Wumyung. Wumyung finally gets the immortality herb, but it's too late. Or is it? Next thing you know, the Dark Lord reincarnates into some young Mudang disciple. You already know, he's about to corrupt the hell out of that clan with his evil schemes from the inside. At 5, we've got Reverend Insanity, serving up that buggy cultivation chaos. Fan Yuan was an absolute monster, one of the most powerful cultivators out there. But Dude was also a savage, murking people left and right without a care. His biggest flex? finally cultivating the legendary Spring Autumn Cicada that can literally reverse time. But that made him public enemy number one, with the entire cultivation world teaming up to take him down. 
In a wild power move, Fan Yuan uses the cicada to rewind the clock just before he's about to get smoked. He wakes up years later in the past as a regular disciple again. Now, this ruthless killer gets a second chance to relive his journey and become even more insanely overpowered. Sliding in at number 4, we've got the servant is the Demon King with the wildest role reversal. So there is this legendary sacred scroll of the abyss that can make anyone who unlocks its secrets into the most OP being ever. It was written by the OG Demon King himself. The current Demon King, Yi Fan Zhu, gets his hands on it, but his top student betrays him to try and steal the scroll's power. Yi Fan gets murdered by a squad of cultivators thirsty for that knowledge. Using one last technique, Yi Fan's soul gets reincarnated into some random servant boy named Fan. The ultimate flex gets reversed. Now, the all powerful Demon King is bound as a literal servant to some women named Lady Lu. Dude's got to grind back up from the bottom while playing butler just to reclaim his demon throne. Coming in at number 3, we have Heavenly Demon Reborn with that brutal revenge story. Unsung was just trying to perfect his spear skills with his master at their small sect. But the haters were mad jealous of how cracked they were. They framed Unsung and his masters for learning forbidden demonic techniques. The entire martial arts world came crashing down on them. Unsung watched helplessly as they murdered his master before offing him too. But then, the dude gets reincarnated into some kid at a literal demon sex training facility. Now, he's been groomed as an elite demon fighter from the jump. If Unsong wants payback on the ones who did him and his master dirty, he's got no choice but to fully embrace the demonic path and become the most powerful hell-raising demon cultivator out there. Sliding into the 2 spot, we've got Return of the Blossoming Blade. This evil demon overlord Chanma and his cult were straight up trying to burn the whole cultivation world to the ground. They were murkin fools left and right. To finally put a stop to the chaos, the biggest sect alliance had to assemble. It turned into a battle of complete annihilation. Only Chunma and this guy Chon Mong from Mount Hua were left standing after chopping each other's heads off. But before dying, Chunma swore the demon forces would rise again. Then, Chong Mong reincarnates hundreds of years later to found Mount Hua in ruins. Now this legendary cultivator has to start fresh and rebuild the sect from scratch. But you already know, Chun Ma's demonic realm is coming back for that rematch. Doesn't that sound exciting? Hell yeah. Heading that one spot, we've got Return of the Mad Demon serving up that delicious second chance Isekai revenge plot. The demon, Jaha Li, was just trying to become the martial arts goat, but his dreams got shattered after falling off a cliff running from a cult he robbed. But then, dude gets that wild rewind. He wakes up back in his 20s. With all his future knowledge and skills, Jaha now has the perfect opportunity to get payback and chase that martial arts demon dream the right way this time. Either way, you know this ruthless, unhinged MC isn't pulling any punches in his quest for cultivated dominance. Phew. That list was stacked with some immensely overpowered cultivator MCs. All that talk of breaking through realms and becoming immortal gods has me feeling exhausted just thinking about it. <laughs> Until next time, may your skills and abilities continue growing steadily. I'll catch you later for more martial arts madness.